What's good, y'all? Kyle Loftus, and today we're gonna break down my latest short documentary, Silence the Noise. Without further ado, let's dive on in. First and foremost, a bit of background about this. If you haven't seen the video, please check it out. I highly recommend it. Yes, I am biased, but it's a great flick. So check it out. You can't expect to be somewhere or be successful if you're not putting in the work, you know? Since I'm my biggest critic, I really have to stop comparing myself to other people and like set aside and like grow within myself. So I go by Angel, and I'm a performer. I'm a choreographer. I teach at two different studios. So just a bit of background, this is called Silence the Noise. It's all about featuring Sony and their new wireless headphones and thus, you know, silencing the noise, kind of cutting all of that out. And it's it's really pertaining that to, to music and people's passion with music and why it matters so much and how it impacts and moves us in life. And through that, we're using Angel Crane, a local Orlando-based uh, choreographer and performer, as our vehicle to drive the story. First and foremost, I wanna talk about scene look number one. We're gonna have about four different looks to talk about, three key looks, and a fourth that was just really more so B-roll content. Um, but again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk about it a bit more because there's an overarching theme with this video, and that is backlight. So to break it down really, really short and sweet, backlight is a key element to making your footage look, I hate saying this, but cinematic. <laughs> Everyone wants that cinematic look. And a key way to do it is with backlight. But again, we're going to touch on that progressively as we go throughout this video. So just wanted to throw that in there. So looking at scene look number one, this is in Angel's room and space. The whole purpose and behind doing this, you know, again, with a documentary, we want to give as much information and detail and insight as to who our subject is and why they matter as possible. And if we can do that without her saying it, you know, forcing her to kind of put that information out, it's even better, you know, being able to visually experience it. So showing her in her room, you know, being able to see her space, is it super, you know, is it, black walls and a bunch of like hard rock posters or is it very light and airy and there's a bunch of pastels and a lot of negative space you know like what is her vibe what you know you're able to feel more off of who this subject is so that was first and foremost now and then looking at the setting getting it to a good look that we wanted again we wanted her to feel comfortable and we wanted the audience to feel like she was comfortable and not like she was forced to sit in this stool in some weird awkward studio or some dark space that didn't fit no we wanted her to feel at home and the audience to feel like they're coming into her home you know they're being welcomed into her story and so we had her just sit naturally on her bed she had this beautiful big wide window um, coming if we're looking towards her coming from the left hand side and so being able to use that window as our source was incredible like literally the best natural source I could ask for. Um, we just threw uh, the curtains in front. She had some white curtains, perfect, worked perfect for us. Um, just threw that in front to diffuse the light about another stop, stop and a half. Um, and so that just kind of uh, diffused the light a bit because just coming straight through the window, although the window does soften it a bit, it was still a bit harsh for us. So we wanted to add that to soften the light just a tad. Um, additionally, we threw up uh, some negative fill on the other side and we crunched that as close to the bed as possible. Um, so that way we are killing off that light and we have a nice dark shadow side So we're getting this really cool dramatic split light effect But it doesn't look super like again like edgy dramatic and dark because you know again We're getting this beautiful um, Soft light coming in through this big wide window and the rest uh, we kind of just left as is we didn't really move anything around we thought about backlighting her but again we wanted this to feel natural it's a documentary we're not trying to do any crazy super eerie or just not trying to do anything crazy with the lighting um so we just pulled her to the forefront of the bed so that way we get as much depth as possible because she didn't have a very 
Um, she didn't have a ton of depth in her bedroom. And so we brought her to the very front and foremost of the bed. So that way we could just get as much depth in there as possible. But that's really it guys for that scene and look. Uh, scene and look number two. Um, this is really the B-roll version I was talking about. Um, but again, it pertains to our key subject here, backlight. Um, so this is the first instance where we really utilize backlight. So we sh wanted to showcase just a little more content of her in her space. Like, you know, she's warming up, getting ready for the day, just listening and jamming to music. Like, what does she do? Like, what is her vibe? You know, and that is Angel. You know, she likes to listen to music all the time, whether it's in her bedroom or it's in the bathroom and dancing in front of the mirror. And so we wanted to showcase that. And we found this really cool spot right by her bathroom with this giant mirror in front of it. But the only thing was that it was super, super dark. We didn't want to, and it was way too small and crammed to, you know, bring an aperture in and try and light it with these big lights like it just wasn't going to work so what we did instead is we utilized backlight again there was a bunch of natural light just flaring in from the window which was fantastic and we shot on the shadow side if you watch any of my other videos you know how much i talk about and love shooting shadow side it is so key to getting cinematic and dramatic looks not only doing that but then using nice backlight. So again, what this does is creates a nice hard edge, creates that contrast and that contour that you want. And again, it really brings out your subject and makes them stand in the forefront that much more. And so that's really it guys. Very, very simple. We used all natural lighting. Again, it helps to have a great camera like a Red Raven uh, that we shot this on. So again, that's helping bring quite a bit of light in and makes it a bit easier on us. So if you're dealing more with DSLR cameras, you probably we are going to have to use some kind of soft source just to get a little more light pumped in there um, just so you're not getting like crazy noise on on the shadow side there but just something to consider but that is look number two guys finally look number three again this one is pretty short and easy to talk about as well we shot this outside at sunset but again getting back to our key main point here what did we utilize backlight see the big mistake a lot of people might make here they think oh well we'd want to shoot with the subject facing the sun because like we want to see their face like we need light on their face like right like we we don't want to lose that and that's great you know it's great to have a nice clean look where you can see their face perfectly and everything's amazing but it's not cinematic it's not captivating backlighting is guys and especially at sunset ah glory hour baby i mean nothing is better um so literally i mean I, the content speaks for itself you know as you're kind of seeing seeing the footage here i mean it just looks amazing now if we shot this with her facing the sun there would be no stark contrast there would be no hard light creating this beautiful hard edge around her there would be no strong contrast like she wouldn't pop and stand out from the background and again they're they're just it wouldn't be captivating like it is here with this backlight and then lastly our fourth and final look so this is the look at the studio her getting uh you know getting her gym session if you will like this is this here we wanted to really feature angel like going hard like really training putting in the effort the hustle time like sweating it out the main look you know obviously the sunset look uh, on the rooftop that's like this like oh like prestigious you know like the high key high accord moment we really wanted to the studio to feel completely different we wanted it to feel like this hustle hard driven just like grungy vibe and so we knew we wanted it very dark very moody and again we knew we wanted to utilize backlight <laughs> Um, and so that's exactly what we did. So in this setup here, we killed all the lights in the actual studio space, just had it completely blacked out. We brought down the shades and then we put two Aperture 300D Mark IIs out there. So we put the Aperture 300D Mark IIs right next to each other and right in between that slit. And so the intention behind that is forcing that light through with that small little sliver right there, creates a really strong hard light and really helps create 
create some cool and cinematic light rays in the studio as you can kind of see with some of the footage from the actual video. Um, so we had that going and then we just simply pumped in some haze again to kind of just add a more um, film-esque look, um, lift up the shadows a bit, give it a little more soft and just creative moody vibe. And overall, guys, really, really loved how it came out. Um, that's really it, guys. A very, very simple and basic um, setups here. Again, having a cinema camera helps a lot. Um, there definitely would have been changes and alterations done if we use a DSLR. For instance, I'll touch on a couple real quick. In the studio space, we definitely would have used a, another source light um, to light her on the shadow side, just to give a little bit of fill. Um, so that way, again, and we're not getting a ton of noise and grain and again we're not just losing all of um, all the information all the data there by just letting it be completely dark like we did with the Red Raven alright y'all that's it for this cinematography breakdown hope you enjoyed and learned a thing or two um, pertaining to cinematography and more specifically backlighting guys I'm telling you if you take away anything from this video it is backlight start implementing that start testing and playing around with it it will change the game for your cinematography photography and you're just overall production like your films your documentaries your commercials simple brand videos like you can implement this for any type of video guys um it'll do fantastic clients will love it you're gonna love it that's it i'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna ramble here I'm, I'm done i'm done if you got a question drop it below got a comment drop it below give me that thumbs up come on y'all i know you enjoyed this shit so give it post notification is it over there? There. I always get this backwards, so I'm going to go whoop, ah, find it and put it on because you don't want to miss the stuff I'm talking about. It's good stuff, man. I'm telling you, it's really good stuff. See you next time.